We're gonna yap for a bit. Don't type Manka. Don't type oh no. We're gonna yap for a bit. Why? So that I can give you what you want, give you what you need. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you need. Okay, Aventurine, we got him. We played him. Initial thoughts, very strong. One of the best, if not the best sustain. Problem is, well, there's no problem. But the problem is, he's only like a marginal upgrade if you already have good five-star sustains. But if you don't, then get him. If you do, already have like Luotra, Fushuan, Huohuo, two of the three, or Japard, two of the four, then you can, uh, you don't need another one. But if you don't have them, or you want a slight upgrade, especially to follow-up attack teams, he's pretty good. What the fuck does he do? He basically gives you Japard's ult, but on his skill, and you get it passively when you enter the battle. Big ass shield, and it stacks on itself, and you get both bonus shields as allies follow-up attack, and you also have decent personal damage. It's not insane. People clickbait his damage for some reason. It's good for a sustain, but it's just like, you know, it's like better than Fushuan damage. It's, it's, it's decent damage. It's especially good if you're buffing it in follow-up attack teams with someone like Topaz, but on its own, it's kind of just, you know, it's a bonus. But, but what's cool about him is you just never die because his shield's fucking tanky and you can stack it twi uh, multiple, well, twice, but you also get like mini shields from his like talent. Hey, Sox, what am I supposed to build? Oh, I got you. <laughs> the fuck? He has cologne. Okay, okay, okay. Don't look at my build, but listen, and then I'll show you mine. Because if you just look at mine, you'd be like, question mark. But like, listen, and then look at mine. Okay, okay, okay. We'll talk light cone. We'll talk light cone. Light cone I can talk about. This is pretty easy. You basically just take something with high base defense and defense percent because you want 4,000 defense. Why do you want 4,000 defense? More isn't bad and a bit less isn't the end of the world. But why? One, so your shield is tanky and you don't die. And two, so that you get uh, this. Where is it? This one. 48% crit rate for free if you have 4,000 defense. It's just a free 48 crit rate. And that's not even the best part of high defense. The main best part is that everything scales on defense, including your damage, but primarily your shield. So you just never die. Like that's the point. But bonus damage is bonus damage. So 48 crit rate is very good. He also has a debuff, which is why he's good with someone like Dr. Ratio, but also Acheron. But I'll talk about that later. It's fine. Why does he have a ball sack window on his shirt? I'm not going back to look at that. Uh, like on stuff, pretty easy. Dude, look at how many I don't have. One day I'll get five stars. His signature's cracked because it gives, uh, okay, I say cracked, but like you don't need it because there's a lot of good options. But the base defense is like super high and then it gives you 40% defense and then it gives you crit damage and another debuff that increases damage by a little bit, right? It's a vulnerability debuff, 10%. It's nice. But the main thing about this Lycone is it just gives you so much defense that it's really good. To be fair, the extra debuff is really good for like Acheron or Ratio, but primarily Acheron. But the main thing is like, you don't really need it because there's actually good options unlike some other five stars for example if you have Japard, the standard lycon then you can also get in the shop although it, it costs like star or whatever it's called like the premium thing so yeah but if you, if you do have moment of victory it's good it gives you a lot of defense again high base defense 24 percent and another 24 percent when you get hit so a lot of defense the hit rate's useless but the defense is nice Japar lycon also gives free aggro yeah that too outside of that you basically just filter by how much defense you're getting for the most part so something like day one of my new life is pretty good because it gives you decently high base defense but also just some defense for free and resistance but mostly the defense is pretty nice. The what's the other like on the, the free to play? No, the battle pass one. This is me is pretty good as well. Even higher base defense. This one's better, but it's a battle pass like on. And then you get 16 to 32 defense while also getting a bit more damage for your ultimate, which is okay. There's also what's the other one? The, the, the new gotcha one concert for two again, defense. It also gives you damage though to your on field characters that are shielded four to eight percent, which honestly isn't bad. So it's just like again, the problem with some of the like cones that have good effects, the base defense isn't the highest, but you get a lot of defense percent, so it's fine, especially with like super positions. It's actually not bad. Uh, it's a pretty good option. So it's usually like, if you can, you choose one of the two five stars. And if you can't, concert for two, the battle pass one, this is me, or day one of my new life are all pretty good, depending on what you have and super positions. The free to play option, Destiny Threads for Woven is also good. The problem is it doesn't give you that much defense. Again, there's no defense percent on it. And the base defense isn't that high. It's not like terrible, but it's not that high. So you, this is usually like, it's free to play. So it's like a decent option. But the problem is you only really want to use this if you can get enough defense, like 4k, on your relics. If you can, then it's pretty decent because you get damage, right? And effect res. So cool. It's pretty good, but you need to make sure you have enough defense because if you don't, then there's like way better options. Well, I guess if you're free to play and have no four stars, then no, but yeah, you get my point. Lastly, trend. The thing with trend is the base defense is really low. It gives you defense percent, which is fine, but base defense matters more because that's what all of your defense percent like scales off of, right? It's still decent, but the main situation when it's actually good is if you're running Akron. Because if you're running Akron, why are they so big? Stop. 
stop. Stop looking. If you're running Akron, then the extra debuff you get when you get hit is actually really relevant. With Doctor Ratio, it's fine too. If you need an extra debuff, the thing with Ratio is like Ratio doesn't need it as much as Akron does. Ratio wants like up to six, but even if you're not fully like six stacks, as long as you have enough in your team, which you usually can get, it's fine. So Trend is still good with Ratio, but it's especially good with Akron. Like Akron wants as many debuffs all the time, nonstop. Ratio still wants debuffs though. Yeah, the only downside is low base defense, but it does kind of make up for it. 16 to 32 defense percent. I think it's good. I think it's a little slept on, especially because if you can get enough defense on your relics, you would rather get a Lycon that helps buff your team instead of a bit of personal damage with like a crit body or something, right? And like the way to increase your team's damage with this guy is not just give him more damage. It's go a Lycon that like helps your team or go for a bit of speed or go for whatever. So yeah, I, I do kind of like trend. TLDR, five star or high base defense with defense percent. And then relic shit, easy as fuck. This is going to take two seconds. Are you, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Literally mix and match substats. You're welcome. That's it. You're welcome. You're actually just welcome. Knight is good because you get defense. And then the four piece gives you the tankiest shield you can get. Realistically, you probably don't need that though. And farming this domain is kind of cringe. Same with two piece speed. If you want it, you could just get two piece speed. And if you want offensive two pieces, you can. You can go either two piece or four piece pioneer for more damage against debuff enemies. You can go two piece, not four piece, only two of the follow up attack set. And you go two piece of the imaginary set. Which ones you choose does not matter. Who cares? You just want substats. Ideally, I recommend going tanky before going damagey. Because the difference between a full defense build and a full damage build is really not that big of a deal. And then planner, it's broken keel or it's something else. Usually it's broken keel because you get effect res and then you give crit damage to your entire team, which is good. That's cool. I'd rather increase my team's damage than just my venturing damage. Another way to increase my team damage is Panicony if I'm running an imaginary damage dealer like Imbibitor or Ratio. Or as long as you're running an imaginary DPS, Panicony is good. So both of those are good based on substats. The other alternatives are for damage, you can go Inert Sal Soto for your follow-up attack and ult. It's fine. I would rather buff my team than buff my Aventurine, but you can go this. Alternatively, if you just want defense and have good substats, Bellabog is okay. You might get it accidentally by doing Inert Sal Soto because it gives you just 15 defense. It's only 15 defense. And again, I would much, much rather give my team 10 crit damage than give my Aventurine a little bit of defense, but it's fine. Stats is, is pretty easy. Again, you're going based on substats, so your relic sets don't even have to be like amazing. You're literally just filtering by stats. 99% of people, you go defense body, you go defense orb, you go defense rope, and then your boots are either defense or speed. Your main priority is 4,000 defense. If you have that, then you start looking for other stuff. Also, the difference between crit and defense is not that high. Like your damage difference between defense and crit is really not that high. Like it's really not that big, but the difference between a good shield and a bad shield is huge. Like you don't want to just be dying. And also, so until 4,000, you're getting free crit rate, right? Free 48%. And even if you're over 4K, it's fine. And if you're a bit under, it's fine too. But if you're under, it's not worth going for crit. If you manage to get 4K or over and you're like, okay, I have enough. Now, what do I do? You can either one, just be like, okay, I don't care. I'll just be a bit tankier, more defense. Or two, this is what I recommend. Get some speed. Speed is like the first thing I would go for if you have enough defense. It's not just for like, oh, you get to go more often. It's also like, first of all, if you're running a follow-up attack team, you get to like keep up with them, go as often as they do so that you can actually get your passive talent that gets the trigger three times per turn. You'll basically just get more stacks. You also get to go more often. You do more break damage. You get more skill points. Skill point generation is probably the main thing I should have mentioned first. So all of that. Second or third is either crit or imaginary damage or ERR. If you were to ask me which one I would choose, realistically, crit damage body or imaginary orb, they're about as good. You could go based on substats if you want one upgrade. It's barely an upgrade. Like your damage genuinely isn't that much higher on crit or on imaginary compared to defense. ERR rope doesn't do that much either. You get the ult more often, sure, but your ult isn't even like that much damage. It's random. You might just roll a one. You're still not ulting that often. The main nice part about his ult is more break damage. That's always why I like alting often it's because it's more break but still if anything going for more defense or more speed i just recommend more so like it's technically okay but i usually just just, just go defense and then teams he's a good sustain everywhere literally not everywhere like blade doesn't really want a shielder but almost any team can use a good sustain eventually he's a good sustain where he shines and is like the best option type of thing would be notably with follow-up attackers usually that looks like something like the standard team is kind of doctor ratio with someone like topaz this is really good follow-up attackers you can also use like clara you can also use himiko Herda, stuff like that. Follow-up attackers are good. Ratio, Dobaz, but basically any follow-up attacker. That works. Also, you could use them with imaginary characters to run Panicony, whatever. Like, you can use it with Imbibitor. That's all good. And Aventurine, what he gives you, not just his synergy with follow-up attackers, he also gives you a debuff. With his Lycone or with Trend, he can give you two. That's pretty pop. So it helps Ratio, but it especially helps Akron as well, so that she can spam her ult. Dude, I just talked about Lycones. Low-key, I think Trend is underrated. Because, like, a lot of the times, you're over-capping on defense. Like, if you have the spare defense that can afford the low base defense, Trend will make it a lot more consistent for 
Akron and arguably ratio, depending on what your team is. Because like if your team doesn't have a lot of debuffs, like you're not running Pila, then you might want it. Also, if you're high enough investment, you don't really need the shield to be that tanky or you have enough artifacts, like good relics on your event tree or on your team, then who cares if your defense is a bit low? Just go trend, get another debuff. But yeah, he's also good for event tree teams because he gives you those debuffs. So he'll just be like basically a better like Fushuen there because he also has a debuff on his alt on top of being able to run trend like Fushuen can. And you're not going to die even if your defense is a little bit low. Well, you should have defense, but ideally you're just killing stuff fast because you're playing a broken character. Oh, Gage. Gamba. Gamba. Okay, whatever. I don't care. For the theater of the mediocre. Existence is human. Yeah. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. Like, I think we'll whittle away at it. <clears throat> I'll do this. And we're running hunt characters anyways, but we have some AoE with, like, well, not really a lot of AoE, but eventually. It's not a lot. <laughs> Okay, we didn't crit. That was not very pog champ. It's fine. That's also fine. That's extra fine. Okay, and it's broken. Um, basic here. Hit my Ron May for energy. That's fine. B bust. Um, I'm actually just gonna do this, break his shield, and then I'll topaz. Pog. Get him, Nami. <laughs> Yo, what the? <laughs> All right, this again. Oh, I should hit the guy that was. It's fine. No, I worked the worker. I didn't see the percent on him. Well, he has he has a bunch of debuffs, right? Okay, I mean, it, it, this guy has more. Yeah, I should have hit this guy, but it's okay. Uh, do I need to skill? No, I'm fine. Uh -huh. There's more to life. Eternal. Stay away. Okay. Okay. Watch your head. Okay. I don't really need a new shield. My shield's tanky. I'm gonna just keep getting skill points. Minus one, though. Okay. Dead. Cocolia, we meet again. I still don't need the shield, I think. The dice have bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. By the way, Aventurine kind of broken thoughts, says the Jeff 77. Wait, since when do you think characters are broken, Zatch? What the fuck? I mean, yeah, it's true. If you already have two healers, though, there's no real, like, need, but he's pretty insane. His shield is, like, super stacked. Go happy. The, <laughs> the Jeff said broken, no weighing. So that's what I'm saying. All right, good damage. Well, decent. You know, decent given our team. It's not Aventurine's fault. Our our, our follow-up attack characters aren't the, uh, uh, as geared. I mean, they're, they're okay. They're geared. I'm I'm just you know I'm coping. Okay, I didn't crit. I did crit. I did 39k. Don't talk to me. I'm gonna break that thing with the uh, Aventurine. I don't think I should break with the ratio though. Maybe I should. Because we're playing Hunt characters, so it doesn't really matter if he takes. Oh, I ulted before Ron. <laughs> There's more to life. Wait, Zaj, who's your second healer? Outside of Fushan. I should have ulted before Ron May's turn. That was dumb, but it's fine. It's not fine. I'm actually very sad about it, but we're going to pretend that it's fine and we're going to keep going because it happens. Ron May's after. I don't need a skill point, so I can just spare one. I don't need the skill here, though. It doesn't... Uh... Okay, you had a level 59 Lynx as your healer. Yeah. I always say this, the biggest upgrade to your account is a five-star sustain, like by far, but and but two of them, ideally, one per half. Once you have that though, upgrading them is, is kind of whatever. But as far as choosing one, Aventurine's probably the go-to. Sure, I'll play along. Sure, I'll play along. Oh, okay, Fla. Uh -huh. Fla should. Me. 
The shield is shielding. Yeah, notice how we literally... Our shield hasn't broken the entire time. And I can't remember the last time I pressed my skill. Ignore that I messed up my Ronmei earlier. And focus on the fact that my shield has not moved. Like, my Ronmei shield is a bit low. But, like, if it ever even comes close to breaking, I can just skill on... Uh... I just got another one, by the way, from follow attacking. Like, another mini shield. That stacks. But if I ever need to skill, like, look. Spend freely. Boom, we're fully shielded. The dice are bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. I just got an achievement. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I get an achievement? <laughs> no way. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I coom. That's what it means. Not bad. Not bad. All right. I'm recording actually off stream now just because I was distracted by chat and stuff. And there's some stuff I want to show you guys because I take this kind of seriously, even though it's a second channel video, not as important as a main channel guide. But anyways, what I'm going to do is show you guys a few things. So you saw my event in a follow up attack team where he's his damage is pretty decent and he's a pretty good character. I want to show you how much he can actually tank, though, and how good his shield can actually be. So in Memory of Chaos 12, arguably the hardest content, but I mean, not really because there's golden gears and stuff. But Memory of Chaos 12 against the event boss that actually has like a huge kind of one-shot potential. It's not a one-shot per se, but it's a lot of damage. And eventually, can mostly just tank it. He's also just good in this team for the reasons I kind of mentioned earlier. But uh, I'm going to start the fight, get to that part, and show you what I mean. I mean, even just here, you can see, like, I used my skill on Ventrine, and now you see the shield bars on the bottom, like, and it gets refreshed when I fall up attack. Well, it doesn't get refreshed, but it adds more shields when I fall up attack. Like, my team is just not going to be taking damage pretty much ever, unless I mess up or it's, like, a huge amount of damage that breaks my shield. But even then, I can just refresh. I can just stack it again, use my skill or, like, the fall up attacks, right? But outside of that, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut to the, the next part. All right, boss fight. Well, last enemy, I guess. Skill. <laughs> All right. No, not yet. Well, I mean, just that dice attack is still like a decent amount, but we're tanking everything. I'm going to skill here. I'm going to alt. Just do everything. Roll a random number. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. That's fine. I weep for the departed. This doesn't matter. All right. Okay, second phase. Here's where things get interesting. My shield's already up. I don't need to use my skill. Like, I might be able to get a bit more shield, but honestly, I don't even think I need to. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to basic here. We're going to let the turn begin. He's going to do a bunch of damage to all of us. As you can see, we tanked all that easily. It's not even the, like, hard phase yet, which is coming up kind of soon. I'm going to try to get some energy on my characters. I'm going to basic on Pila. And we'll get into the next phase after this. Ah, just basic ult him. Might as well. Oops, did not mean to press that. All right, and now this enemy is going to deal damage to all of us and then bring us into this phase. As you can see we tanked everything with the shield if i have my follow-up attack i can um actually have a good aoe but i'm just gonna use my skill here just to get my shield up fully online on everyone almost have my alt don't quite have it whatever i'm gonna skill here on acheron i rolled a nine so it's hard but it's fine we got that on her on pila i actually will get it if i can alt i'm not running the tutorial mission i'm just gonna skill and then i'll get my alts whatever don't need to think too much that's an alt i'm fine and then on silver wolf and on aventurine as you're gonna see i'm about to tank his like big hit of damage so if i get over a nine as you can see my Akron and my Pila, they're safe, but my Aventurine and my Silver Wolf aren't. So I'm just going to let him hit us and we should be able to tank this. Now, there could be a potential downside of our Silver Wolf getting stunned, but I mean, you'll see what happens. The shield takes a bunch of damage, but we're fine. Like we're actually just fine. There's another hit. We're fine. Nothing hurt us at all. Our shield is still healthy and I have my alt available. I could re-shield if I want to as soon as it's my turn. Press my skill. Full up attacks also give us a little bit of like a bonus shield and everything's just cool. Now, that's kind of, you know, for reference, by the way, we're on a four-star light cone, not even fully superimposed. Our defense isn't even that impressive. Yeah, it's a bit over 4,000, but 4,000 is the goal. And Wait, how much do you have? Yeah, like 41-ish, 100. And uh, yeah, like this is just a really strong tanky character. I will say a potential downside is that while Aventurine gives your entire team around 50% effect res at level 10, it's 50%, which is good and can help you resist debuffs. There's a chance we get like stunned or imprisoned still because it's not necessarily like a cleanse or full immunity. It can happen, but for the most part, having a decent amount of follow-up attack damage while also being especially tanky, a really, really strong shield for your entire team is pretty sick. And I assume it's also good in simulation 
related universe, but we have yet to test that. I'll do that a bit later. But yeah, even just for Memory of Chaos, which is like the premier sort of hard end game content, really, really tanky shield on top of being good in follow-up attack teams with someone like Akron, if you can debuff through his alt and also with something like the trend like or a signature. And yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to show off. Uh, I'm yapping a lot, I know, especially for a second channel video, but I didn't want to kind of show that all off just because, you know, I take these videos to a high standard. And as I said that, I just wasted a ton of debuffs because I forgot to alt on Akron because I was distracted. So <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's move on. Let's cut, let's, let's cut. Okay, pretending I didn't waste the stack. Wow, good damage. Kind of. I mean, it's single target, so it's going to be lower, but yeah. So yeah, that, I mean, that's mainly what I wanted to show. And also very skill point efficient. Like, I don't need to reskill very often unless I just want like a shield or, or whatever, like energy, right? But a lot of times I can just basic on him and we're chilling. Like you enter combat with a shield. That's a big thing, right? One of his talents is you enter combat, you're shielded. So you don't like a lot of the fight, you can just basic attack to get skill points if there's no real reason for you to skill. Yeah, you, but also you can skill if you want to tank your shield. Maybe you're doing golden gears. You're fighting a boss. You're afraid, whatever. You can just shield again and his shield actually tanks more than uh well it's as you can, i don't know how to word this but like yeah you can basically get twice the shield than you get when you skill which you'll normally get by follow-up attacking through your passive trace right here you get like sort of mini shields on all of your allies especially whoever has the lowest shield but you could also just skill again if you want a bigger shield so yeah i really like adventure hope you guys enjoyed this video a bit of a different format excuse some scuffness some mistakes in the live footage like it happens right we're just having fun but i also wanted to give you guys a bit of a build some advice and stuff. I'll try to do a main channel full guide for future characters, maybe Robin, maybe Boot Hill. I'll try my best and to be early and on time. But for now, second channel video. Hope you enjoyed. That's how you build uh, the, the dude and the, he's fun. He's cool. Okay, cool. Get him if you want. He's a good character. Other healers like Fushra and stuff are also, well, shielders, I guess, or healers. Like the five star ones are all really strong. I say for your account, you want two of them, Japard included. Once you have two, you don't necessarily need to get other ones. But as far as the sustains go, Aventurine is definitely up there. Really, really strong. He's re a really good comfort character, super strong shield, and you don't have to worry about anything, even if you're just stacking defense and aren't like wailing on him, even with just a, like a four star or a free to play Lycone, you can do really well. All right, that's all. Goodbye. No more yapping.